Two, three, four. Run up your engines! Now people are always asking me, Scotty, what's a good economy car for getting from here to there? Well, today I'm working on a 2010 Chevy Cobalt, and I'm going to tell you the truth about them. This particular one is a two-door, gets pretty good gas mileage, and so it gets about 25 miles a gallon in the city, and 36 on the highway, so it's good on gas. And when it was brand new, it was about $15,000. But back in the year 2010, when this was new, for $1,000 more, you could have gotten a Toyota Corolla, a much better made car. Now, as we look inside this one, we can see 103,000 miles and it's still running. When we start it up, checking a little on the tire pressure monitoring lights coming on, that's not a big deal itself, but let's take it for a spin. You can hear the suspension clogging a little. Let's see how it takes off. Get some room here. It doesn't take off all that bad. The corner's okay. So it's a pretty bumpy ride. It's a small wheelbase, and let's face it, it's a 10-year-old GM product. You go down the road, you're gonna feel the bumps in it. And as in the Econobox car, got the plain old seats, pretty basic trim, you know, basic little radio. It does have AC and it still works. And it's a typical small two-door. Not that much room in the back seat. And when we open the trunk up, Small car, but it's got a deep enough trunk. There's there's still some room in it. So let's check under the hood. Strangely enough, for a Conobox car, it's got a hydraulic strut. Now, the engine itself is a 2.2 liter engine that puts out a reasonable amount of horsepower. It's got 155 horsepower, so for its size, it's relatively quick. 2010 Corolla, you get 158 horsepower in one of those. So, it's not running away from the Corolla speed-wise either. It's got a four-speed automatic transmission. That's a decent transmission. They don't have any particular problems. And when we check the engine, it's got a timing chain. It isn't one of those rubber timing belts, so it is better made. So, for all intents and purposes, it's not a terrible car, but it's not a great car either. Disc brakes up front, but when you go to the back, it just has cheap drum brakes on it. And you can see parts of the paint are fading away. And the front headlamps are all fogging up because it's cheap plastic stuff. You can see they're all fading away. So my opinion, hey, you would have been nuts to buy one of these things brand new when you could have gotten a Toyota Corolla for $1,000 more and have four doors instead of two and a much better built car it's gonna last longer but try finding a good used toyota corolla for dirt cheap not an easy thing to do almost impossible unless you know somebody and they're friends and they're just selling it to you because they like you you can get these things dirt cheap used and this one has a hundred thousand miles doesn't run bad if you could pick up a car like this 500 bucks a thousand dollars hey it could be a great knock around car you're gonna pay a lot more than that for a Toyota Corolla, the same age that has two 250,000 miles on it, not 100,000. That's just the way the market is. And this one, hey, it's still nice and red. Doesn't look that bad if you polished it all up. Now, granted, the inspection sticker is now 50. 15 years out of date. And that's something I always warn somebody about if they're buying a used car. You got a real old inspection sticker on it, be very leery. Personally, I probably would never buy a car that had a sticker that old. You never know what the underlying problem is or why it never got inspected. Could be a really expensive problem. So you see something like that on a used car, run away. Don't even think about buying it. Now this is just the car I'm checking out for a customer because it's got some check engine lights on and see what's going on with it. But if somebody had brought me this car and let's say they could buy it for 500 to a thousand dollars, as far as it stands now, I'd say, go ahead. What do you got to lose? Still runs decent, the wheels aren't falling off, doesn't make any strange noises like the transmission's going out, shifts good, stops good, has a reasonable amount of acceleration. You always have to temper price with quality. You want to spend more money and get a higher quality car, go right ahead. But like I said, you're not going to get any really cheap Corollas that are in the decent shape this thing is in for that kind of money. 
And here's some bonus questions and answers. Chris V926 says, Hey, Scotty, big fan. I'm thinking about buying a new 2020 Hyundai Velostar N. I like the looks performance. I'm willing to forego used on this. I have a good job and have been burned by my 08 Altima on its fourth transmission. Thoughts? Yeah, well, you found out Nissan makes crap transmissions. There's no arguing that. Now, the Hyundais are better than the Nissans. Yes, that's true today, especially in Altima. They don't hold up like Toyotas and Hondas, but on the other hand, it's kind of an interesting looking vehicle. If you're happy with a car that will go relatively trouble free the first 100,000 miles and you want to buy a new, go right ahead. Just realize you're not going to get two, 300,000 miles out of that Hyundai like you could out of a Toyota or a Honda. It's not going to last as long. But if you're happy with 100,000 miles or a little bit more and you're buying it new, well, you might be happy with the vehicle. They're not terrible vehicles. They're a lot better than they used to be. Giants says, uh, Scotty, I'm 18 and beginning my college career with a steady job. I saved up enough to buy my friend's family classic car. It's a 1983 Buick Electric Park Avenue with 73,000 miles garage cap. New exhaust system, reliable. They just want the garage space. The local mechanic says it's good. It wouldn't be my daily driver just for pleasure. I can afford it. Before I buy it, what do you think of this? It's an 83 Buick, but it's only got 73,000 miles. But it's an 83 Buick. Now, they were better made in those days. They were decent cars. They are actually very well-made cars back in 83. But it's a 1983. So you're talking about 37-year-old car. That's an ancient car. If it's a toy and you can get it cheap enough, go ahead. Just realize that over time, you're going to have to replace every rubber part, the engine seals, the brake seals, because all the rubber is going to be rotting being that old. But if you want a toy like that, play around with it. If you get it cheap enough, eh, what the heck? You said it's not going to be your daily driver. You would never think about buying a car that old as a daily driver. 300C says, Scotty, can an oil pressure sensor cause a car to feel like the car engine is shuddering when coming to a stop when the engine isn't fully warmed up? On most vehicles, it wouldn't, but a lot of GMs. A lot of the GM ones, the oil pressure sending unit is also connected electronically to the fuel pump. And that's a safety thing so that if you lose oil pressure, the fuel pump shuts off so you don't blow the engine up for having low oil pressure. If you got one of those, yes, it can make it shudder and even shut down when you come to a stop because it'll turn the fuel pump off. And in any other car, the only way it could do that would be if the oil pressure sender is leaking like mad, then it's going to lose a ton of oil pressure. It would really have to be squirting out. But if it was, you could lose enough oil pressure that that would affect how it would run, especially a modern car that has variable valve timing system that's run through oil pressure. And the oil pressure drops, it's not going to run right. So it could do that too. Taha asks, would Lucas transmission fix work on CVT transmissions? No, I would not put it in a CVT transmission. CVT transmissions are radically different than normal geared transmission systems for which the Lucas was designed for originally. They use a special fluid. They have a completely different design. I would not chant something like that. With CVT transmissions, you have to use special CVT fluid. You can't put normal fluid in them. The Lucas stuff is basically normal transmission fluid. It wasn't designed for CVTs. It's a heavier fluid. It's going to change viscosity. There's no saying what would happen, but I would not put it in one of those. The only thing I would do with a CVT if it was having problems, I'd change the fluid, put in the factory CVT fluid that was designed for that car, and pray that helps, because if it didn't, rebuilding those things cost a fortune. The Hatsu dude says, what do you think is the worst mainstream bad car of the 1980s in terms of reliability and or durability? What is the worst? Well, yeah, I'd say probably the whole range of Chrysler K cars. They were ugly. They had terrible engines in them, especially the four-cylinder ones. Ridiculous transmissions. They rusted like hawks up north when the salt gets on them in the winter. They were probably the worst fleet of cars ever made. All of the K cars. <laughs> There's one where Lee Iacocca didn't do such a hot job. They were always praising how smart he was. He made a lot of boo-boos, and to me, the K cars were absolute garbage wagons. What they looked like, they fell apart. They had no resale value on it. I mean, it's just, he even had one that they uh, turbocharged that was even more ridiculous, and they fell apart even faster. Mongo, Jerry says, I got a 99 Camry V6. White smoke comes out on startup. You want to pray that it's one and not the other. You want to pray that what it is, is maybe your fuel injectors are a little bit dirty and they're spraying a little bit too much gas in when you start up. Then you get white smoke from having 
a little bit too much fuel and it burns out and smokes out the back. The other thing which you don't want to happen is the head gasket that's starting to blow because if your head gasket's starting to blow the coolant 50 percent water turns into steam and then you get white steam coming out of the back when you start up the vehicle. I got a video how to tell if your head gasket's blown. Watch that video, perform that test. If it is, then you got to decide, do you want to keep the vehicle and put a head gasket in? If it's a V6, that's a lot of money. Or do I want to get rid of it? Or do I want to gamble with something like Bar's head gasket sealer? Put a little in the radiator and see if it lasts even longer. I've had good luck with customers' cars. Some of them, year, two, three years later, they're still going and they just they add the sealer every once in a while. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.